In the last video, we talked about how the central banks impact the currency market through uh, uh, yields, which ultimately uh, will impact cash capital flows. So capital flows are going to, uh, uh, they're going to seek yields. So central banks that are beginning to push interest rates up are likely to see a, a increased value in their currency. So if a central bank wants to push interest rates up, what they're essentially doing is they are slowing the rate of inflation of their currency. So they're always basically inflating their currency, but they're slowing that rate. Well, that's going to constrict the supply of money a little bit, and that drives interest rates or yields up because competition for that cash is, in, is increased. Conversely, if they want to drive interest rates down, they're going to inflate more aggressively. So they'll increase the, fl the flow of money, the supply of money available to banks, et cetera, and that is going to, uh, uh, that will drive interest rates down because the supply is much greater, so the cost of that capital is much lower. Well, cost of capital is a driver of economic success, so that's largely why you see the central bank beginning to drop interest rates when the economy starts to shrink. So these risks to inflation versus growth, et cetera, are one of the major uh, decision factors for do you raise or lower your interest rates. Uh, the problem is, of course, and I've talked about this before, it, all of this depends on a normal economic environment. When you hit a situation such as we are in currently, where, uh, for example, what you'll often see, see uh, or the most common thing that you'll see among central banks is that they'll want to see inflation of around 2%. Well, the problem is, is that they're all operating at more than 2% right now, uh, including the four central banks that we're seeing this week. We've got inflation rates over, and real inflation rates over 2%. Well, that makes it somewhat problematic to continue to reduce your interest rate, because how do you do that? You increase inflation. Well, if inflation is already above your comfort level, it puts you in this weird situation where you're constantly having to balance the costs of continuing to inflate at a higher than comfort level, uh, or what are the risks to growth if we don't lower the cost of capital here and we don't uh, uh, incentivize economic growth, economic success. So this is, this is somewhat problematic. Now this is not the only way in which uh, the central banks will interfere in the uh, foreign exchange. So here they're driving yields, which then in turn drives investors and drives demand for currencies uh, or the lack thereof. But there is, there is another way in which uh, central banks will interfere in the foreign exchange, and that's through foreign exchange reserves. So ba central banks will maintain reserves of foreign currencies. Most of these are in dollars. Uh, the second largest currency that's being held by these central banks is euros. Uh, and the, and the, three, the three big ones won't surprise you. Uh, the biggest holder of foreign exchange reserves is China. Number two is Japan. Uh, number three is Russia. Number four is the European. Uh, the, the Eurozone. So we get these, uh, th these big foreign reserves. It's not as predictive. It's really useful from two perspectives. One, to just kind of get a theme of what's the monetary policy like over here. But two, it's, it's not really predictive on a really short-term basis, and there's not a lot of information available about what they're doing. For example, we're just getting the information about uh, the European Central Bank's activities in their reserve accounts. Uh, their foreign exchange reserve accounts in May and June when they were actually getting rid of some uh, uh, foreign reserves, which would actually drive the, uh, drive the value of the euro. Now, <clears throat> what they're really doing, though, and you'll look at the top three, what they're really trying to do is a, a long-term strategy of suppressing their currency. So, for example, if, uh, if they're trying to uh, lower the value of the yen, what they would do is, of course, sell yen and then buy dollars. What that does is that increases demand for the dollar and decreases demand for the, for the yen over here. So specifically, this is going to impact the dollar-yen exchange rate. Now again, these are more, much longer term strategies. It's not really something that a central bank can, and then, now they've tried historically, but it's not really something that a central bank can jump in and try to do this on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis. Uh, it's very speculative that, in fact, short-term movements uh, in the foreign exchange, exchange reserve account, it has any impact on the 
uh, Forex at all. It's more of a kind of a long-term policy, which is where we see those big three and what they're and we can tell what they're up to, what they're trying to do uh, to support ex export-based economies. Now, you will see this periodically, however, uh, impact the Forex. It's rare, but once in a while through verbal intervention. Now, this is something that central banks will do when they're not going to actually do anything. They're just alerting the market that if, for example, the value of the dollar does not stop dropping, they're going to diversify their foreign exchange holdings, which means that they're going to continue to dump dollars. That will create a worse problem. It will drive the value of the dollar even, even further down. They'll buy euros or something like that. You will see that periodically, and it will uh, affect interest rate or exchange rates as traders try to adjust to that probability or try to add a risk premium into the market uh, to account for that. So that is one thing that you will see every once in a while is verbal intervention relative to this situation right here, and that is the domain of uh, central banks. So it's one that we watch, and it's important to understand what's really driving that.